Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin for today. It's Thursday, August 16th, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com and YouTube is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. Also, if you'd like to help me out, I would truly appreciate it right now. I know times are tough out there, but uh, anything helps, you know. Um, I have a PayPal thing, so you can donate there on my website. Um, okay, so I'm ready to go. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so please check them out. Approval of Congress falls to all-time low. Just 10% of Americans approve of the job Congress is doing, according to the Gallup poll released Thursday. It says here it's tying the lowest mark in 38 years. So there's many reasons for this. Um, it says here, U.S. launches sweeping immigration reform. Undocumented immigrants are applying for temporary right to live and work openly in the United States as a sweeping immigration policy reform takes effect. So up to 1.7 to almost 2 million people could be eligible for the program unveiled by in June by President Barack Obama amid pressure from Hispanic voters. Republicans say Mr. Obama has passed over Congress and unemployed U.S. citizens with the program. So just playing the old politics game, Arizona Governor Brewer, no state IDs for young illegals. She issues executive orders as Obama's program begins. So it goes on here and it says that um, as young illegal immigrants lined up to apply for Obama's deferred deportation program, I guess that's what they're calling it, deferred deportation, de facto immigration status uh, yesterday, the governor made it clear that where she stands on the issue, she issued an executive order stating that young immigrant granted work permits under the program would not be able to receive any public benefits, including driver's licenses or other state IDs. So, And then we have this, you know, we're talking about anti-authoritarians -authori and why they're being diagnosed as mentally ill. Well, this guy goes into it, the link will be posted, he's a PhD, so, but uh, basically anti-authoritarians question whether an authority is legitimate one before taking the authority seriously. Evaluating the legitimacy of authorities includes addressing whether or not authorities actually know what they are talking about, are honest, and care about those people who are respecting their authority. So it says here, and when they assess an authority to be illegitimate, they challenge and resist that authority, sometimes aggressively and sometimes passive aggressively, sometimes wisely and sometimes not. And he basically makes the argument that, uh, you know, why mental health professionals diagnose these anti-authoritarians with mental illness? Well, it's because uh, they have to gain acceptance, all these doctors. They basically cow down and they do whatever they're told to teach uh, these uh, eugenics programs, law school, uh, you know, doc medical school and all that. So um, they're used to basically not uh, opposing authority. So they see anyone that does as being mentally handicapped. So... Um, yeah, some of these symptoms may include, before we go on, uh, it says here, actively refuses to comply with majority's requests for consensus-supported rules. So it says here, that they perform deliberate actions to annoy others, i.e. angry and resentful of others. They argue often, so they're challenging the authority. They blame others for his or her own mistakes. So uh, when you're on the edge of killing yourself because you can't find a job because of, well, the system that you live under, you're going to uh, blame others, I guess. I guess you should blame yourself and just put that old, take the old bullet train, as they say, right? It says here, has few or no friends or has lost friends because they realize that they're alone. Because most of the people around them, including their friends and family, have done what? Uh, they basically, they, they don't challenge authority at all. So it says here, uh, thousands of UK workers blacklisted over political views, activists threaten legal action over failure to investigate. So a secret blacklisting database to screen out left-wing troublemakers and union sympathizers have as, as potential job recruits are facing renewed scrutiny. So we're talking about authority. Uh, Adam Ademo Mueller, journalist and coplock.org uh, founder, Faces 21 years in jail after reporting school police brutality. So that, that's right. He's on the host of Free Talk Live, facing 21 years in the Huskow for reporting on police brutality towards students. And just remember, I just showed that video of that, uh, that, that little dude in jail just walking along his way and getting sucker punched by this big-ass guard, among many other things. It says police handcuff 40 innocent motorists at gunpoint for two hours as they act on a tip to catch a bank robber at an intersection. So they stopped 25 cars, arrest and detain 40 innocent people over two hours as they turned their hunt for a bank robbery suspect into a frenzied blind search. So handcuffing every adult at gunpoint. 
Cops came from in every direction through their car in front of my car, says Sonia Romero. Pretty interesting. So the cops didn't actually know, uh, you know, if these people were part of the, the robbery or what. So they just handcuffed them all. So there you go. That's See, back in the old days, it might actually be to where you, uh, some people might actually help out their local sheriffs. But now that you have these political law enforcement officers, i.e. Uh, pigs, uh, they just believe that they're the only purveyors of morality, and they're the only ones with uh, firearms that know how to use them, and they're, they're the only ones that can defend property, uh, life, and whatnot. So a humongous ego is working there, and that's why they do what they do. Plus it goes against what a volunteer society, which is a stateless society, which is basically, uh, me personally, I don't believe in the legitimacy of police officers. I don't think they should exist. Um, so with that being said, you know, I think that people should voluntarily uh, take care of their own property and stuff like that. If Wells Fargo really cared about their bank, they would have their own private security taking care of the issue, not having cops going around uh, arresting people. Because uh, most of the time, they don't usually actually protect or prevent um, property from being stolen or life from being taken. So uh, police, so basically that's why I think they're not even legitimate for what they are supposed to be doing, which is uh, remaining, uh, keeping the public safe, public safety. Uh, police 17 year old strangled by seat cop uh, or seat belt in cop car so yeah it says here the state police are investigating the death of a 17 year old apparently strangled himself with a seat belt in the back of a police car investigator said so this was in indiana then in arkansas says uh, arkansas police reconstruct uh, handcuffed shootings so it said here they released a video reconstruction tuesday meant to show how the 21 year old man was handcuffed behind his back could have shot himself in the head while in the back seat of the patrol car so you see what i'm saying here guys uh, or you could be raped in the back of a cop car as well. Texas cop car charged with raping women in police car. Well, maybe she raped herself. Maybe that's what it was. Like this guy strangled himself in the back of the car. Or the guy shot himself in the back of the car. Just uh, uh, miracles are being performed in these cop cars or Batmobiles. Doctors target gun violence as social disease. So the public health experts ask, is a gun like a virus, a car, tobacco, or alcohol? They say yes. In the wake of the recent mass shootings, calling for a fresh look at gun violence as a social disease. But will they look at cops and military? No. The state? No, they won't. They'll go after uh, this poor bastard right here. He's Ohio man brought handgun to Batman movie granted bond. So people go, oh, what would you be doing that for? Don't you know what's going on? Don't you know about the shootings? Why would you carry uh, concealed weapons into a theater? And uh, basically it goes on here and it says, the attorney said, there was no intent by my client to hurt anyone. This has been a blown out of proportion by the media. So, yeah, basically they said that he brought his gun for protection and for the protection of innocent people. So, yeah. So, yeah, so you have College Station Gunman was a ticking time bomb, says Stepfather. And when you go down here, it says, though some studies suggest there is a link between mental illness and the violence, and violence, the vast majority of people with mental illness are not violent, according to the University of Washington. So they're still kind of uh, trying to push that, that link between mental illness and violence, i.e. Uh, uh, challenging authority, right? Because this is what we're talking about, challenging authority. But remember, uh, if, you, if you have a gun, you may be violent and you may have a social disease. So you, like I said in the last video, you may be very, very sick. So if you have a social disease, i.e. you're mentally ill, you might be violent. You might get a gun. It says here, TSA chat downs investigative at, at Boston Logan's Airport. The Department of Homeland Security is investigating complaints from airport security officers that the chat down program at Boston Logan Airport has become a magnet for racial profiling. They're talking about um, complaints from Middle Easterners, Hispanics, Blacks have been targeted in the program. But it isn't just minorities. This is kind of a um, this is one of those one of those things like in New York where they're um, I think it's even the CIA is helping the New York City Police Department and that uh, target Muslims and stuff like that, spying on them. They're spying on everybody, and this is race warfare is what they're doing. They're trying to divide and conquer, and this is a good old-fashioned technique that, that is used uh, by the powers that be and by the state uh, to maintain control, to consolidate their power always. So it's not just minorities. I mean, there was 90-year-old white uh, uh, elderly women having their uh, piss bags pulled out of them, uh, you know, and wheelchairs, you know what I mean? Wheelchair bound, and they were harassed just as much. And you have these things called behavior uh, detection monitors, but detecting people's behavior in airports, and they go at everybody. I don't think they're really uh, targeting just minorities. So 
is something uh, worth taking note of. White House pulls down TSA petition. So if you do try to challenge authority, let's see what happens. Uh, it says here the White House removed a petition about the TSA airport screen procedures from the White House We the People website. About 22,000 of the 25,000 signatures necessary for a response from the regime were obtained when the White House uh, unexpectedly cut short time period for the petition. The site also went down from, quote, maintenance. Ah, they must have learned that from YouTube. I'm sorry, YouTube, following an article in Wired that sought support for the campaign. So, yeah, that's what you do when you air your grievances. Uh, uh, they'll just go ahead and, and, and say, sorry, it's gone. And it's gone. So, uh, here we go with here with the military industrial complex promoting war, promoting killing people, telling you that it's violent if you carry out violence against the state. But if you carry violence out against people in other countries where you're trying to destroy their culture, um, that's called heroic. That's called patriotism. And so here we go. U.S. pro-war show draws protests. That's right. Dozens of protesters have staged a rally in New York to voice anger at a new reality show, which they say advocates the country's warmongering policies. So it goes on here, and it says, reportedly, the show, which is hosted by former NATO commander Wesley Clark, of all people, who warned us about the taking down of countries one by one by one, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, all of them, right? And eventually Iran, thinking that, oh, he's on our side. Well, no. Well, he's working along with a group of celebrities, i.e. programmers, right, for Hollywood. Right, has uh, depicted the war in Afghanistan as a game played by contestants. So it says here, a member of a military family uh, said here that having my son return from two real wars in Iraq and Afghanistan with the cost of war carried in his body and heart, I find this show deeply offensive. So NBC says it's to pay homage to the men and women. No, it's actually glorifying what they're doing, what I was talking about, which is the military industrial complex, which doesn't give a shit about individual sovereignty or nationalism, if you did believe in that. It's about a global empire run by corporations, and those that fight for the corporation are, quote, heroes. So a lot of these guys come back damaged and broken, and I feel sorry for them. I feel sad for them and their families. And so the best way you can pay homage is by calling it out, calling out, uh, what it is, right? What I just said, what they're working for. It says here, meet Brigadier General Tammy Smith, the first openly gay U.S. general. That's right. The first openly gay officer of the flag rank in the United States Army. So that's uh, good stuff. It's called diversity. So, And they reverse the don't ask, don't tell policies, which also is going to, uh, I think, personally, I don't know, but I think it'll mess with, uh, as they say, unit cohesiveness. As far as, uh, you know, having um, people that are going to be openly gay, there's always going to be gay people in the military, and there was when I was in, but it wasn't like a big deal or anything. But I guess if they say, oh, well, come out and talk about it, they're promoting it. And this, again, is kind of divide and conquer. And you say, why would they want to do that in the military? Because they don't give a shit about nationalism. They don't care about us versus them. It's all going to robots. Eventually, they're going to phase you out. Also, going back again to the KGB operative, uh, that Yuri Bezmanov, he even says that they export, they use these these techniques, you know, of diversity and stuff like that. It was a Soviet communist type thing that they do, and um, it's used to break down society, the order of society, the natural order of society in the military. It makes you weak. It makes you vulnerable. And we're going to switch back to this first uh, first woman to moderate presidential debate in 20 years. CNN's Candy Crowell. So maybe it'll be more truth, right? Maybe she can uh, do a better job at basically uh, moderating between a bunch of puppets working for the global elites and basically give the illusion that there's a real debate going on. And this is from June 1st, but it ties in what I'm saying about the government and pushing this agenda. Obama's Homeland Security pimps gay pride, tranny speaker on agents, making a hostile work environment for the straights. So this is at the actual site, I guess, DHS Pride, the uh, Association of Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Employees, DHA Pride Ceremony, June 7th. I thought this thing was kind of funny, the lesbianic woman. So I guess it is a good spokesman, right? A Napolitano says here, this event will feature as a keynote speaker, a post-op male to female transsexual who calls himself Amanda Simpson. Said the former Mitch Simpson was Obama's trainee affirmative action appointee to the Department of Commerce. 
In Oxford University rewrites gender dress code, students will no longer have to wear gender-specific academic clothing after concerns it was unfair to the transgender community. So while Mel Gibson is still defending himself for remarks about uh, Zionists in Hollywood, uh, programming icons that do promote this uh, hermaphroditic agenda move forward, or some call it the androgynous agenda. Thank you.